Welcome back to another Mech Tech Tech. We have another upgrade god for you today, featuring Fey Dominion from Wilds of Eldraine. This fairy typal deck is looking to create a ton of fairies that pack a punch when they're on the board and reward you for when they die. Before we get into our standard 10 cards out, 10 cards in, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button for me to help the channel grow and to make sure that you never miss an upload. Today's episode is dedicated to Radical Ans. Radical, you rock. So I'm going to be sticking with the face commander for the deck, which is Tegwil, Duke of Splendor. This fairy lord is pumping up all of our other fairies and rewarding us when they perish. Alayla, Cunning Conqueror, was the alternate commander out of the box, but the deck could actually honestly support either or, even as it is. Uh, so Alayla is here to reward us with some fairy tokens whenever we cast spells on our opponent's turn. We have a lot of fairies that are flashable, we have a lot of instants, uh, both in the form of just like regular instants as well as adventures, you know, on our, our many creatures. Layla also makes it so that whenever one or more fairies we control deal damage to a player, we get to goad a target creature that that player controls. I really wish it was a little more like for each you get to go one creature, but arguably probably too powerful. Uh, either way, let's get into this and see what didn't make the cut. The deck was actually super strong out of the box, so these cuts weren't easy. Starting off our list, we have Cloud of Fairies. It's a 1-1 flyer for two, which pays for itself by untapping two lands when it ETBs. Uh, this certainly isn't a bad card and has potential to be cycled away, but there are stronger fairies out there, and for that reason, it just didn't make the cut. Mindstone is up next. This colorless mana rock can ramp you slightly and eventually let you sack it off to draw a card. Certainly not the worst mana rock I've ever seen, but you know the single card draw payoff isn't all that great in this deck. We already have a ton of ways of drawing extra cards, so I think it could go. Mocking Sprite is on the shopping block as well. This 2-1 flyer for 3 reduces the cost of all of our instant sorceries by 1, and we do have a lot of them, including Adventures, which I mentioned earlier. But I don't see it sticking around the board very long. You know, mana reduction like this is a prime target for removal. And, you know, again, we just have stronger fairies out there. Puppeteer Click follows our Sprite. Uh, this 3-2 flyer will let us temporarily steal an opponent's creature from their grave and exile it after the fact. It has the added benefit of having persist so we can do it all over again. Definitely a tough cut to make. Stealing creatures, even for just one turn, can be really powerful. But we really wanted to make some room for power of our own. Quickling is a flashable 2-2 flyer that forces you to bounce a creature that you control or sack it when it ETBs. We do have a few e decent ETB triggers that we could use this in tandem with, and also a lot of bounce spells. So I don't really think we need this one on a body, right? We have a lot of other bounce spells already. We're going to be abusing our ETBs and like bouncing back our opponent's creatures left and right. We're good to go. Reality Shift is up next. It's a decent piece of removal, but again, I think we can cook with more gas than this. As I mentioned, we already have a lot of removal, generally in the form of bounce spells, but we also have, you know, a few other ways of just, like, kind of dealing with this nonsense. Reckless Spite is here for more or less the same reason. It's decent removal and a two-for-one special with that, but it has limitations on it. And we have better ways of getting rid of creatures. Tegwheel Scouring is a board wipe that, you know, we can play at instant speed by tapping down some of our flyers. Basically, every creature in our deck is a flyer, so like we're not hard up for those. It also provides us with a few fairies after the board's been cleared. And uh, honestly, was was probably the toughest cut that we had to make for this deck. Theoretical Duplication is another way to steal power from our opponents. But again, I it's good if you're going to like do a token-focused strategy, right? I have things that double up the tokens I generate. In that case, the article duplication is just like really strong. Or we're gonna generate a bunch of dudes. And I feel like for three mana, we're gonna get like decent value out of it. But 
you know, reliably, I want to, I want things that are going to synergize with what I'm doing, and what I'm doing is fairies, you know? Last up is more ramp in the form of Wayfarer's Bobble. Uh, this card is actually great as a turn one into two play. Right, this, uh, this could let you have four mana on turn three, assuming, of course, that you're not missing any of your land drops. But we have a really low mana curve, and I just don't know that this is necessary in the deck. With those cards out of the way, what's taking their place? Curiosity Crafter tops our list. This bird is here to offer us a few key things, I think the most important of which is that we no longer have a maximum hand size. This deck is drawing a lot of cards, and while some of our cards like to see other things already in the grave, they can get there naturally after we've used them. The second thing it does is offer us more card draw for each of our tokens that dealt damage to a player, and with the number of fairies that we're generating, you know, we're gonna see a lot of card draw off of this Curiosity Crafter. Fairy Mastermind joins us and offers up some more card draw whenever an opponent draws the second card of their turn. We know that players love to draw cards, we're gonna get a little bit of benefit for them doing so. We can even force this to happen by paying the four mana, and, you know, it lets everyone draw a card. A little group huggy, but, you know, we're getting some real value out of it. Feywild Caretaker is up next and may feel a bit out of place here, but he provides us with some lands. Uh, just by getting the initiative, we're going to go into the Undercity. The first thing it does is let us grab a land from our deck out of the hand. And in our end step, when we have the initiative, which we're going to at least the first turn that he's out, we're going to create a Fairy Dragon. And honestly, with the number of fairies that we're generating, I think we're going to be able to chump block pretty consistently and maintain that initiative and just continue going through Undercity. Our last new creature to join the ranks is Talion, the Kindly Lord. Uh, so naming three or four with this noble was going to, you know, proc pretty often, not only offering us a ton of card draw, but also pinging our opponents down in the process. So... You know, he's new, he's from uh, the New Wilds of Eldraine, and he's phenomenal for this deck. Moving into our summon spells, we have Notorious Throng. Using this powerful sorcerer, we can swing really freely, dealing a ton of damage, and if we happen to have the extra mana, take an extra turn with it to close out the game with our large army. Stolen by Fate is a slow but powerful bounce spell that will force our opponent to recast a powerful creature, while also flooding our board with a bunch of fairies. Moving into our artifacts, we have Thought Vessel, which is a direct replacement for our mindset that we took out earlier. It again offers us no maximum hand size, and I'm going to value that much over the ability to draw a single card. Last up, we have our three new enchantments, and starting off that list is the powerhouse that is Bitter Blossom. At the cost of one life per turn, we're going to create a 1-1 Flying Fairy Rogue, which can act as blockers that's when they come in, and then help us deal a little bit of chip damage after that. I actually managed to pull a copy of this at my pre-release event last night, and I did pretty well with it. Up next is Feywild Visitor, which will let our non-token fairies create some fairy dragons for us when they deal combat damage, assuming of course that our commander is out on the field. And last up is Wizard Class. So we start off strong with no maximum hand size. We level it up to draw two cards, and eventually we get to pass out counters every time we draw a card. We're drawing a ton of cards in this deck. We're going to make all of our, you know, important creatures real big and beefy, make them a little hard to get rid of. And with the flying that all of our creatures have, you know, that evasion goes a long way. Not every creature your opponents play are going to have, you know, flying or reach. So we should be able to just, like, slip on by the defenses and punch them in the face. This is usually where we would slink off into our powerful combos, but as much as it breaks my combo-loving heart to say, we really just don't do that here. This deck is definitely more aggro with a splash of control than what I usually build, but I'm looking forward to playing it just the same. But guys, that's the deck. As always, there is a link to the full deck list down in the description. Uh, you know, were there cards that I took out that you think, man, that really should have stayed in the deck, what are you doing here? Were the cards that I overlooked when adding new cards into the deck? 
Um, is there a commander out there that you'd like to see me do a custom build around for you? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, good luck with your builds.